Hi, John C.V. again, this time with a lesson on ADF, the Automatic Direction Finder. The ADF is the oldest radio navigation instrument still in use. It generally uses the signal from ground stations called NDBs, or non-directional beacons. NDBs transmit in the low to medium frequency range, shared with many commercial AM radio stations. And in fact, those AM stations can be, and often were, used for ADF navigation and for listening to Zydeco during flights. These days there are very few NDB stations left. They appear on sectional charts as a small circle surrounded by radiating circles of dots. The station visible in the center of this screenshot from skyvector.com, an excellent website where you can view and order aeronautical charts, is the Carpen NDB near Astoria, Oregon. The NAVAID data box below gives us its frequency, 201, its identifier, Papa Echo November, and Morse code identifier. Low frequency radio waves are not limited to line of sight, which is why ham radio operators can receive signals from the other side of the world. But, as you can tell if you've ever tried to listen to AM radio, it suffers from many other limitations, making it difficult to receive a clear, accurate signal. In addition, an ADF does not have an off flag, making it necessary to continually listen for the Morse code identifier when navigating with ADF. There are several different kinds of ADF instruments in the cockpit. One type is the Relative Bearing Indicator, or RBI, and there are two types of RBI, fixed card and movable card. Their appearance and operation are similar, the biggest difference being that a fixed card RBI gives us no heading information. It's numbered starting with zero on top and in degrees clockwise from the nose. A movable card RBI moves automatically with a DG or is set manually with a knob to show the present heading at the top. This difference introduces us to two important terms. Because the numbers of a fixed card RBI are measured relative to the aircraft's nose, the needle points to a relative bearing. On the movable card, with magnetic heading at the top, the needle points to a magnetic bearing. More on that in a second. The other major type of ADF is the Radio Magnetic Indicator, or RMI. An RMI functions like an automatic movable card RBI, but has two needles that can be tuned separately to different NDBs or even to VOR stations. The key to using any kind of ADF is the simple principle that once tuned and identified, the needle will point to the station. Just like a radio, you look up the frequency of the station you want and turn the dial. With the right frequency, you should see the needle swing toward the station. Turn up the volume and make sure that you're listening to the correct station. And remember, if you have a manual movable card RBI, to set the heading. Now we can read the bearing from the instrument. There are two ways to read an ADF. We'll talk about both. First, if you remember the key idea that the needle is pointing to the station, you realize that you could simply turn your aircraft toward the needle and you'll be heading toward the station. VFR, this is all you need. If you're studying for a written or practical test, you'll need to be able to do more. And then, how you read the instrument depends on which type you're using. Remembering that a fixed card RBI doesn't give us heading, we should first check our compass. In this example, our aircraft has a magnetic heading of 044, or northeast. It's often useful when navigating to visualize the overhead situation, so that's what we'll do here. During a written test, you'll have scratch paper to draw it out. Next, we need to check our ADF. The needle is pointing to the aft left quarter, or 225 degrees from the nose. In other words, the relative bearing to the station is 225. So we already have a general idea of the direction, or bearing, to the station. To find the exact bearing, we can use the formula. The mnemonic was taught is, Mary had roast beef, Mary barfed. Maybe crude, but if I still remember it all these years later, then it must work. we find a magnetic bearing to the station of 269 degrees, or nearly due west, magnetic west. 
turn to a magnetic heading of 269er and you'll be headed right toward the station. Movable card RBI and RMI with the heading at the top give us a direct indication of magnetic heading. In this case our aircraft is heading 315 or northwest. The relative bearing is nearly identical to the previous example, but with movable card RBI and RMI, the needle points to the magnetic bearing of 190. No math is needed. A quick glance at the instrument tells you instantly that a turn to 190 will take you toward the station. Still, it's useful to draw or visualize the overhead situation for questions like this. The written test asks to determine the approximate heading to intercept the 180 bearing to the station. You could look at the ADF, imagine a turn to 180, and note that the needle would still be to the right, so you would still need a turn right of south in order to intercept the course. Or you can draw the 180 bearing to the station, and then it's easier to see that a heading of southeast would intercept the course, and quickly eliminate the other headings. So there's our answer. If the winds were calm, all we would need to do is turn toward the needle, and we would fly to the station. But to correct for a crosswind, there are two techniques we could use, homing and bracketing. Homing is, by far, the simplest. Turn toward the needle and keep it pointing up. But it also flies an arc, which is less efficient. Unless it's a great arc, but these are not so great arcs. Bracketing, on the other hand, takes some practice to perfect, but lets you fly straight to the station. A good way to practice using radio nav aids is with a radio nav aid simulator. There are a few free versions available on the internet, but I like Tim's Air Navigation Simulator because of its simplicity and ease of use. Let's use Tim's and try some homing and bracketing. Here it is. Thanks, Tim. We'll do our practice using a fixed card RBI. And since it doesn't give us heading information, we'll need a compass. We've calibrated this DG to the magnetic compass within the last few minutes, so it's giving us magnetic heading. From the default starting position, you can see that our aircraft is facing, or heading, east, 0, 09 or 0 and the station is just a few degrees left of our nose. Moving the aircraft south, with the heading still on 0, 09 or 0, you can see the needle swing left. The needle is now 30 degrees left of our nose, for a relative bearing of 330. A little math, magnetic heading of 90, plus a relative bearing of 330, gives us our magnetic bearing of 420, or 60 degrees past north. Of course, if we were using a movable card RBI, we wouldn't need any math to show us our magnetic bearing of 060. An RMI would give us the exact same result. But that's too easy, so back to a fixed card RBI. Let's set our aircraft due south of the station. Heading east, the needle points to our left. We'll turn our aircraft toward the needle. And now we're heading toward the station. That's all we would need to do to fly to the station without a crosswind.